filmmaker Ava DuVernay has been breaking down walls in her industry for several years with widely acclaimed films. Now, as Jeffrey Brown tells us, the pioneering director is taking on a different challenge, overseeing the adaptation of a much beloved book, a movie with a big budget and big expectations to boot. A straight line is not the shortest distance between two points. It's a trip to a fifth dimension of space travel through what's called a tesseract. Where are we? A kind of portal through the galaxies, better known to millions of readers as a wrinkle in time. Madeline Langle's beloved 1962 science fiction novel for young readers now comes to new life as a big budget Disney film. This is our father. As young Meg Murray and her companions search the universe for her missing scientist father and do battle with dark forces of evil. I saw the girl. I saw the girl as hero, Meg Murray. This week in New York, I spoke to director Ava DuVernay. The girl who's the leader, even though she doesn't think that she is or can be. I loved that story and went to make sure that it was told, um, but also told from a perspective that included um, images where all kinds of girls and boys could possibly see themselves in it. It's the same story, it just has different skin. It's a deeply emotional story of love and loss, but one in which science and brains are more important than brute force. The film features Oprah Winfrey, Mindy Kaling, and Reese Witherspoon as the three mysterious astral travelers who serve as guides to the young adventurers. Two electrons once bonded together in love, if you will. At the heart of the story here, a mixed race family with 14-year-old Storm Reed playing Meg. I'm conscious of the fact that there hasn't been a hero, a, a kind of a, a cinematic leading lady who's the heroine of her own story uh, that's been in the body of a black girl. And so to have the opportunity with Disney's blessing to say, let's expand this and make sure that all kinds of kids can see themselves in the, in the, in the film. And I'm proud of that simply because really something that Mindy Kaling said to me, I, I used to love the genre, youth fantasy sci-fi, mm -hmm. but it never loved me back. I never saw myself in it. Is this something you thought about from the moment you took it on or as you were thinking about what, what you were going to create? I don't have the privilege of not thinking about it, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's not like a quirky thing that I think about or comes to mind. It's, it's life. And so when I'm making film, asserting myself in images of people like me, women and people of color in places where we've been long mm -hmm. absent, mm -hmm. isn't a kind of cool thing to do for the movie. Asserting my presence in a film is not anything that requires any thought. It just is, because it must be if I'm working on it. On Twitter, the 45-year-old DuVernay calls herself a girl from Compton who got to make a Disney movie. Here we go, and action! Today, she's a top director, producer, and screenwriter, as well as film marketer and distributor, actively working to change the culture of Hollywood. Cut, nice! Her 2012 film, Middle of Nowhere, made her the first African-American woman to win the Best Director Prize at the Sundance Film Festival. It is unacceptable that they use their power to keep us voiceless. She received wider fame and recognition in 2015 with her historical drama, Selma, which received an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. The next year, she made 13th a critically acclaimed documentary about the intersection of race and mass incarceration. And she's the creator of the own network television drama, Queen Sugar, set in Louisiana on a family-owned sugarcane farm. As the show's executive producer, DuVernay has made a point to hire all women directors. Also dangerous. With a wrinkle in time, DuVernay becomes the first African-American woman to lead a $100 million film production. Is it surprising that that's still a, a thing? No, I mean, we, we live, uh, you know, I work in an industry where, unfortunately, it's, it's no surprise that it's taken since, until 2018 to, um, to make this so, so it doesn't surprise me. It's bittersweet. Um, it's not anything that I applaud in myself or anything that I wear as a badge of honor. I think it's a real indictment of... Because you um, look back at what, why it hasn't happened before. Yeah, it's an indictment of an industry that's ignored incredible black women, brown women, all kinds of women of color filmmakers for decades, a century, over a century. 
So the fact that there's been a decision to put a light on me has nothing to do with me. Um, it has to do with, you know, a trend in the industry in the moment that I happen to be standing here. She recently formed a partnership with the city of Los Angeles and others to fund 150 Hollywood internships for women, people of color, and those with low income. And DuVernay herself became a different kind of role model when Mattel made a Barbie doll of her. At Sunday's Oscars, she appeared in a video calling for wider inclusion. And though she praised this year's event, she says lasting change in the industry is still to come. I think change is a big word. Um, is there a spark? Is there a leaning in, an interest, and awareness that change should occur? Yes. Um, but change involves systems, you know what I mean? True change involves, you know, a real, um, you know, disassembling of architecture and systems that mm -hmm. we've not achieved, we've not even gotten close to. So what does it take to change at this point beyond the kind of work, you know, individuals like yourself are doing? There's so many different layers, um, you know, filmmaker proficiency, what images are seen as valuable, um, who are the curators, who are the people who are deciding what uh, the audiences should see, cultivation of audience, selection of where theaters are around the country. There's a cinema segregation that happens in this country. I just took Wrinkle in Time to Compton, a city that has no movie theater. We had to create a movie theater. We had to create a movie theater in Selma to show the film Selma because it's a black community with no movie theater. So then you get into which images are valuable and which audiences are valuable. So it's a complex question. Yeah, not only and what's getting made, but who gets to see it. That's right? correct. Do you see yourself as an artist who is always interested in this examining and remaking the world? Art is simply entertainment that has meaning. You know, there's some things that are empty calories and there's some things that are soul food. Mm -hmm. and I prefer soul food. With a wrinkle in time, DuVernay says she has the chance to speak directly to young people. It's really about, you know, the times that I've been the most um, content in life are the times that I didn't focus on the darkness, mm -hmm. didn't focus on where I was from or what I didn't have. And uh, it's just a, a shift in perception about the way we walk through our days. Imagine if, you know, you had a million people living in that heart space. Um, it would be transformative for the culture. A shift in perception, like that wrinkle in time that transports the characters in her new film to unimagined worlds. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in New York. DuVernay's next project is a mini-series about the Central Park Five case in which black men were wrongly convicted of a brutal rape.